Now we're going to talk about Newton's second law. And by the second law, we mean the second law of motion. There were three laws of motion that Newton articulated when he wrote his famous work, The Principia. He had a lot of stuff in there. He has a lot of theories and a lot of ideas that were correct and that he is given credit for. But the three laws of motion are some of the most famous. The first one is the law of inertia. And now we're talking about the second law. Newton's second law of motion. Now earlier we were talking about acceleration. And we know what acceleration is. Acceleration is a change in velocity. That's the definition of acceleration. But the question comes up, what causes acceleration? Why does something accelerate? Well, the answer is acceleration is caused by a force and you understand what a force is, it's just a push or a pull. So you can picture a mass, this could be anything, so we'll just draw a little box and we'll write M on it for mass, and there's some force acting on it, we'll call that F, and that causes it to accelerate, and we'll draw a little arrow there and call it A, and that represents the acceleration, and the force and the acceleration are always in the same direction. So we push a mass and it accelerates, and we have these three variables, F, m and a. f is the amount of force, m is the mass, how big or how massive the object is, and a is the acceleration. So you have to think this force f causes this mass to accelerate this much. And in any given situation like this, when you have a particular force acting on a particular mass and causing a certain acceleration, those three variables are related mathematically in this way we can say that a bigger force, a bigger value for F, will result in a bigger acceleration. And that should make a lot of sense. A bigger force causes a bigger acceleration, or a larger force causes a larger acceleration. And that should fit with your everyday experience. You know that if you push something harder, say you're pushing your friend on a bicycle, and you give your friend a push, your friend accelerates more if you push harder. That just makes complete intuitive sense and completely matches our everyday experience. A bigger force causes a bigger acceleration. And you also should understand that a bigger mass, if you apply a force to a larger mass, that results in a smaller acceleration. And this should make sense too. It might take a little bit more thought. But think of it this way. Imagine you're, you're throwing something. You, so you take your arm and you, you have a certain amount of strength. Your muscles are only so strong. So you can exert a certain amount of force with your muscles. And so you throw a baseball, for example, and cause it to accelerate. And it, it starts off still and it picks up speed as a result of the force of your throw. Now imagine trying to throw something like a refrigerator something that's much larger, a much bigger mass. Well, your, the, your ability to accelerate it is going to be greatly reduced, not because you're any weaker, but because the refrigerator is so much larger than the baseball. A bigger mass, because it has more inertia, is more difficult to accelerate. So this idea should make sense to you as well. A bigger mass will result in a smaller acceleration. And those ideas, those two ideas, can be expressed together mathematically in one very succinct equation. We write this, A is equal to F divided by M. And you should be able to see these two ideas in this equation. Imagine we're going to do the math here, we're going to take F and divide it by M. And you can tell that if you put in two numbers here and do the arithmetic, do the division, you get out a number for A. So think, in this case, the way the equation is written here, think of F and M as your inputs. You're going to put in those numbers, and this represents how much force you're exerting on this mass. And then you do the division, and that will tell you how much it accelerates. Well, you can see from the equation that if you put in a bigger number for F, you'll get out a bigger number for A. Because if you have a fraction, like say you have 7 over 2, well, if you make the numerator bigger, if you made it 100 over 2, this would be a bigger number than that. Putting in a larger number in the numerator gives you a larger answer. 
In the same way, putting in a bigger number for F is going to give you a bigger number for A. And that's this fact. A bigger force results in a bigger acceleration. That fact right there is contained in this equation. Now, you can also see that putting in a larger number for M will result in a smaller acceleration. And you can see that just based on what you know about fractions as well. If you have 1 over 2, well, that's a certain number. Or if you have 1 over 100, you know that 1 one hundredth is a lot smaller than 1 half. And so you see that the larger number down here in the denominator results in a much smaller overall value for the fraction. And so if you put in a, a bigger number here for the mass, then when you do the calculation, F divided by M, having a larger number in the denominator will result in a smaller number for your answer. So this idea that a larger mass results in a smaller acceleration, that idea is also captured in this equation. So A equals F over M. Now we can take this equation and do a little bit of simple algebra. Let's start by rewriting this equation. A equals F over M. Now mathematically, uh, you may have learned this in algebra if you've already had an algebra class already. If not, just watch. This is some good math to, to know. You can take an equation and you can do just about anything you want to do to the equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So in other words, I have this left side is equal to this right side. That means that I can do something to the left side, for example, I could multiply it by 2. Don't write that down, just watch. I could multiply it by 2 as long as I multiply the right side by 2. If A is equal to F over M, then it, it's logically compelling to say that 2 times A is equal to 2 times F over M. And as long as I multiply both sides by the same number, if the original equation is true, then this new equation is also true. So what I'm going to do, instead of multiplying both sides by 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by m. And when I do that, the left side simply becomes m times a, and on the right side, these two m's cancel. This m right here can be thought of as m over 1. And you don't have to write that, but if you think of it that way, it's apparent that that m is in the numerator, and it will cancel out with this m in the denominator. So all I have left on the right side is F, and I can see that that F is equal to M times A. So that's the algebra. Write that answer like this. F is equal to M times A. That's just a rearrangement algebraically of this original equation here. These two equations are really the same equation, just arranged differently. They're mathematically equivalent. If you know this, then saying this doesn't really tell you anything new. They, they both contain the same information. And uh, one other point, this equation is often written like this. F equals MA, and put a little arrow over the F and over the A. Those are vector arrows. Those indicate that F and A are vectors. This is a vector equation, which means these things have direction. Force has a direction, and acceleration has a direction. And they're going to be the same. If you push something, it always accelerates in the direction that it's pushed. So there you have it. Those are the main concepts of Newton's second law, and we'll be do, doing some more work with this equation uh, in a few minutes.